Well, I pulled out the uh, Christmas present I got this for Christmas again this morning. So if you weren't here last Sunday, I read a couple things illustrating um, mistakes and how many make mistakes. Obviously, if you haven't made a mistake, you're probably not telling the truth, but uh, we'll forgive you for that. But um, <clears throat> I come across and find this humorous, um, but uh, life happens. And so there was this um, newspaper in San Diego printed by a, the story of a woman who had a little canary um, whom she affectionately named Chirpy. And so the little bird brought all kinds of a song and beauty in their home. And one day she was vacuuming, and she thought, oh, my, the bottom of Chirpy's cage is so dirty. I'll just vacuum the bottom of this cage. And while she was vacuuming, the phone rang. So when she reached over for the phone, she lifted up the vacuum cleaner and sucked in Chirpy all the way down to the tube, down to the little bag. Of course, she spread, uh, she opened the vacuum cleaner and cut the bag open, and there was Chirpy inside trying to survive. She breathed a sigh of relief, but she thought, oh, he's so dirty, so she put him under a faucet and ran water all over him, and when, and then she was finished with that, uh, she took the blow dryer out and dried him to his totally dry, and the newspaper reported and said, well, wh what's he like now? And she replied, he, he doesn't sing very much anymore. You know, it's just kind of a little cute little um, illustration how stuff can go wrong. Stuff that you don't plan on. Um, life happens. Um, a lot of our life that happens, actually an illustration from Chuck Swindoll, who said that 90% of life is, is 10% is what happens in life, 90% is our attitude toward that. Think about that. Some things we can't change, some things we can't avoid. The only thing we can do is, Lord, help me help my unbelief sometimes. I want to believe, but help my unbelief. And so whatever has happened over the year, you may have learned by it, trust that you have learned by it, you have grown through it, you have grown to trust in the Lord. Oh, we know you need him more than ever than you have ever have in your life. You need the Lord more than now than you've ever realized. And that is a good thing. That we're becoming more, of a, more aware of our need for him. As the longer we go along in this faith walk, that our faith is actually going to be tested from time to time. And tested is the thing that the Lord does from time to time to stretch us, to help us to move to the next level. And I don't like tests. I never have, never did well in tests in school, actually. It wasn't my thing, but God has a way of shaping our lives through our ups and downs. How many are thankful to be on the other side? Sometimes now, today, you're on the other side, and you're going forward. And so we can't go back in time. We can't, I don't think, if we're really honest, we really would want to. We can't turn the clock back. We only learn and we grow and move on. You know what? We are, we are, we are called by God to trust him for one day. Give us this day our daily bread. You see. And so we learn to walk one step at a time, walk by, by faith and not by sight. So I'm looking forward to a good year. Man, who would ever thought 2019? We're still here. And we're still trusting in Jesus. Somebody said somewhere, if I heard this, you know, if I had known I would have lived this long, I would have took better care of myself. Have you ever heard of that? It's a good thing. At the same time, we learn from, you know what? We're still growing. 
We're still going forward. We're still trust. We're still learning. That's a good thing because when you stop learning, you stop growing. You stop growing. You begin to sh shrink back and fail. We want to push forward until the Lord calls us home. And so I'm, I chose this psalm, one of my favorite psalms today, to kind of bring us to a thought that we are blessed to know the Lord. If you know the Lord, you are blessed beyond the average. You are blessed beyond the normality. If you have God in your life, you have the advantage. You have benefits that the world cannot give to you. You have a peace that surpasses all understanding when God is in your life. And so the psalmist declares, Psalm 103, Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless his holy name. What is he saying? He's describing the words that would bless the Lord, O my soul. It's deeper than just an intellect. It's deeper than that which just would appeal uh, kind of off the top of his head. But it was coming from from his inner man, his soul man. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Somewhere throughout the psalm, you will find it over and over. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And sometimes our soul needs to be encouraged. The soul. And where do we get that encouragement? We get, it, we get it by beginning to think upon the Lord. Praise the Lord begin to become thankful for what already you know things could be worse we could we always could we always could think of someone else has got it worse but bless the lord on myself here's a here's the next verse forget none of his benefits oh how quickly we are to forget sometimes all the blessing that the lord has already given us how quickly it is how easy it is to as the children of israel after they got into the promise as they were going along and after they got through the, the egyptians army that was behind after they got to the red sea after they got through all the miracles what happened they begin to forget they begin to murmur they begin to complain they begin to grumble they begin to think, oh, if it was just for the old days. Oh, if it was just so I could just go back and have the, the food that we had then. They were not satisfied. Something happened. Something has to take a hold in our life. Something of a discipline. Let me not forget your benefits. Proverbs chapter 3 describes it. Let, write them down on the tablet of your heart. Etch them in your soul. It becomes a part of you. It becomes who you are. You're a person who looks to God, to praises God, who pardons all your iniquities. Listen, the fact that the Lord forgives us of our sin is enough to rejoice and go on and, and be not complain about a single thing from thereafter. It really is. That God would bring about a forgiveness and a cleansing as he said later in this psalm, as far as the east is from the west, he removes it. Who heals all your diseases. Stand upon his word when it comes. If you need healing in your body, stand on his word. Claim his word. God you are the healer. Begin to speak to your, even to your own body, even to the area. Begin to speak God's word. God has brought, uh, God brings a blessing. God honors his word. I'm not saying that all diseases are always healed every time you pray. But I believe that there is potential and that there's nothing too difficult for the Lord. Let us be a praying people. He heals all their diseases. He said he heals all their diseases. He redeems your life from the pit. That is another statement. That if he never did one more thing for you and I, the fact of the matter that he saved you, he called you, that you have a life eternal with him, that you have enough to rejoice in, that you have enough to be satisfied with, he says he satisfies your years with good things. In verse 5, he satisfies your years with good things. Now you can fill in the blank. What are the good things? God lets us have a few things. Sometimes they're things. But I have a sense that perhaps the things 
that are the most satisfying have to do with your family, have to do with the relationships you have with your children, with grandchildren, et cetera, et cetera. The good things that have to do with being in right relationship with God and right relationship with family. A, a family that has been blessed to have God in their lives often can enjoy more than others who do not have God because God brings peace. And where God is, there is peace. Where God is, there is light that comes more than just some surface thing. But it comes to a common bond, a common uh, denominator through Jesus Christ himself. And it comes down to the church and to belonging to the church, the body of Christ. You satisfy your years with good things so that your youth is renewed. That's an interesting verse. So that your youth is renewed like an eagle. Wait a minute. He's satisfied. He said, all of a sudden you don't realize how old you are, but you're still you're living it out. You're still thinking like you, you were back in your 20s. How many of you remember... My dad, I asked him when he was in his 90s, how old do you feel in your mind? Oh, about 20. I mean, he's thinking about stuff he did when he was a youth. At the same time, he says as he got into his elderly age, he said, all things come to an end. You remember that, Linda, when he said, all things come to an end. And so he was learning to accept that this life is not eternal. But while we're here, if God gives me the strength, why don't I live it for the utmost? Why don't I do the best I can? Why don't I just put on the garments of prey? Let me be a person that infuses other people around me. And some of you are here today who encourage me, but you may not ever hear that. But you do encourage me because of your walk with God. That's the, that's the body of Christ, that we are to encourage, infuse each other, that we are to give hope and encouragement to say, you're, you're not through yet. You're not done yet. God is, still has a plan for you. And as long as he giveth the breath. I think that we're, my dad was always the happiest when he had something to do. I think we all feel, we want to feel useful. Right? We want to feel useful. We want to, feel, we want to contribute. We, want to, we don't want to just sit on the bench. And some of you have been on missions trips. And some of you have given to missions and some of you have given to, uh, to the places of need. And some of you have, have prayed. And some of you have reached out and sent cards and et cetera. On and on ago, you opened your homes. This all helps us to become the people of God that learn how to worship and walk together. It satisfies our years with good things. How many have learned that the smallest little things that are make you the happiest. A small, little, daily routine in life. How many still enjoy a cup of coffee? Right? How many enjoy the cookies? Yeah. There's so many. Th How many enjoy when you go to some place? Oh, there's a friend. There's somebody I know. And see, folks that come into a community, they don't know anybody. We got to love on them. I remember coming to this community back 20 some two years ago. Going to the restaurant, carrying on. We looked around, we don't know anybody. It was a lonely stretch. We went to the ball game, we looked up, we don't know anybody yet. Yet. And now we feel we're, we're at home. We've been in the community this long. It didn't take that long. Pretty soon we started to make a connection. Carrie got our. Uh, was a preschool teacher at the community center where we started our services. And there she got to meet all the parents bringing the little children to the preschool. That was a blessing from the Lord. And so throughout the years, she has, Carrie has been a great uh, in-the-community person through the school and through her job and through her workplace. And myself, I've been able to work in the community I've been able to, I feel like I have a second congregation in the community. And so that when I go out and about in the community, now it's said, oh, yeah, wave at so-and-so. Oh, yeah, he comes, so-and-so comes over and talk to me. I pull into the 
air up the tire this week in my trailer. And a, a carpenter comes up and, oh, yeah, that's the guy who helped us on the roof. I begin to think, and sure he comes over. How are you doing today? And it's like this whole conversation we start from uh, just because we've had contact. Hey, I've got so much work, you know, and it's on and on and on. It's, it's just, there's no turning back. And so he's not, he's not quitting. He's, give, he's going on. It's, God wants us to put forth an attitude of thankfulness that we are here. We are alive. There are places, people, things to be done. Work to be done, right? There's stuff to be done. There's assignments. Someone is always in need. Someone may need encouragement from you this week. Some may see through your attitude. You see, the Lord is always looking for a heart in which he can feel, fill. His eyes are moving throughout the earth at all times. He's looking for a heart he can fill. And said, so there's someone who has a heart for me. I'm going to sign. I'm going to make things happen. I'm going to put things together that he's going to be able to work towards this part of the kingdom. I see their hearts toward me. I see there's a faithful person. There's a person who has, has, has been faithful to their assignment. I'm going to give them more. I'm going to bless them more. They have given little. I'm going to give them much. That's how God is. God is a God of abundance. God is a God. He's not stingy. He's not holding back from you. He wants you to be able to go forward and enjoy life. God wants you to enjoy even sometimes things that are hard and painful, that there can be in the midst of it all, there can be a peace that surpasses all understanding. Somehow this God is going to get the glory out of this. And so, number one, being in right relationship with God. That is the ultimate joy. That is the ultimate thing that will produce your joy. Having your sins forgiven as far as the east is from the west. Secondly, having the, the understanding that we're going to live forever. With him. When we place our trust in him, we're going to live with him forever. What's a hundred years then? It's a blink in eternity. It's just a moment. Here's how life is. The psalmist describes it on this earth. Verse 14. He himself knows our frame. He's mindful that we are but dust. Wow. As for man, his days are like grass. As a flower of the field, so he flourishes. When the wind has passed over it, it is no more. And its places acknowledges it no longer. Wow. What does that say about this life? Life is short. Here. Life is short. Life is, this is not eternal life here now. This is the place God has placed us for now. And when he calls us, we shall be changed. When, we, when he catches his church out of here, we're going to be changed. What, what's going to happen? The body that you have now is going to be changed. You're going to receive a heavenly, you're going to be transformed. You're going to receive a heavenly body that will live forever. Will we have an appetite? I believe so. Go take my appetite away, O oh Lord. He satisfies with good things. The Lord said, I will wait. He says to disciples, I will wait for you. At the Lord's Supper. He said, I will not drink and eat now. The day will come. I will wait for you. We're going to eat in heaven. I believe we're going to have a great time. Cannot describe. Cannot fathom. But till now, oh, Lord, let me not become so attached to this world. 
so, in a sense, given over. But I'm going to, with the help of the Lord, if I'm taken, I'm ready. But until then, I'm going to be thankful. I'm going to make every day a count. Dad was never one to sit around, was he? Linda and Dan took care of Dad at the end of his years. And he had a little workshop. And one of the stories was when he backed out of the garage with his little uh, golf cart or went into it, uh, he didn't, the button didn't work or something, but he kind of crashed or dilapidated. <laughs> something happened. And so he, he would probably chuckle, feel bad about it, but his life, stuff happened. I'm thankful for parents, how they lived, how they showed the way, the simple things, the very basics that was enough. Food and clothing. The scripture doesn't talk about, oh, we, we, we've got to have the best of this, the best fashion we've had. It doesn't say that if God blesses you, be thankful, share it with your neighbors, share it around the community. Do you know what? I can be happy. I can be content in having a little, a little, a little. He satisfies his years with good things. You see, the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting, verse 17, to those who fear him. Here's another benefit besides the forgiveness, besides the healing. Besides the satisfaction, besides he redeemed your life in the pit, besides that he crowns you with loving kindness, compassion. Here's one of the great, another great gift. And he says this in verse 17, that the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him and his righteousness to children's children. In other words, he's there for the next generation. He's there for the next generation and the next generation. And if you're concerned for your grandkids and it's okay, be concerned, be in prayer for them, be con concerned for your great, if you have great grandchildren, God is their God too. God is for the next generation. One of the saddest verses throughout the Old Testament, and there arose another generation who did not know God. That's, that, that begins to churn in my spirit. But what is our job? We're, our job is to help our young people know God, know, encourage them that they will become a follower after the Lord because it's their, his, he is their God. He's not just your God. That's what needs to happen. That's what our next generation, that's what the believer, the youth need to understand that they are, God is for them. God is for their future. God has plans for the next wave of people and those who are yet created. See how, close, see how God looks way past us into the next generation. And he has eternity. How he knows all things at all times. He knows your mind today. He knows how you feel. If you have aches, he knows that. If you have fears, he's concerned about that. If you have stuff that's like a mountain to you, difficult things heading at you, he stands there holding out his arms to you. Trust me. You don't have to carry all the load. Be free. I am the one. Cast your cares upon me. God is actually your employer. Think about that. God is your provider. You're working for the Lord. Your job that he's given you is an assignment. You know, someone's saying, wow, I wish I would maybe get something different. Until he opens another door, let us be found faithful. So we move into this third point, this thing, this big word, sovereignty. What? Look at it, verse 19. 
The Lord has established his throne in the heavens. And his sovereignty rules over all. You mean, when I don't understand what's going on, he does. When I have questions and I don't seem to get the answer, that means maybe I'm not supposed to know. Did you know that Deuteronomy 29, 29, you know what that says? I think you've heard it before. The secret things belong to God. He says this. But the things he has revealed to us belong to us. Wait a minute. There are some things that you will never understand until we reach eternity. There are some things that he doesn't want you to know right now. Rather, he wants you to trust him anyway. And sometimes we wrestle. We can wrestle. It's okay to wrestle with God. You, you won't win. Yeah. What I mean, I'm thinking about a man in the Old Testament. Remember? Jacob, right? He deceived his father and mother. He deceived, well, actually, his mother was in on it. He deceived his father and he robbed the birthright from his brother Esau. Oh boy. Esau is coming. He's on another, he already has a large family. Esau, God blessed him. Jacob is fearful that Esau has a revengeful heart. And so he begins to make the preparations. He begins to hold his family in distance. And he goes to prayer after God. And he wrestled, it says, through the night. And it, was, it says the angel of the Lord. Often when it says the angel of the Lord is actually a reference to pre-incarnation Christ. And you know the story. He said, I will not let you go until you bless me. What a determination. I will not let you go until you bless me. What was it about the blessing? There's something about the blessing that we can give, fathers can give, grandfathers can give to their children and their grandchildren. We speak blessing on them. Speak positive Uplifting words, encouragement, blessing. There are a lot of young people have never really understood. I myself really couldn't understand it until several years ago it dawned on me. There is this thing called the blessing throughout Scripture, especially in the Old Testament. Why was it so important to have the blessing? Why was Jacob, why did he want it so bad? Because it meant that he would be blessed. The Father has a privilege to bless his children. Verse 20, bless the Lord. Let me go back and finish the story. Jacob wrestled with God. The angel of the Lord touched him in his hip. He touched me, made him lame. Somehow, dislocated. That was the, it. That was the end of it. That put Jacob in his place, so to speak. Somehow, God was doing a work past the physical. Because God says to him, I'm going to change your name, Jacob, to Israel. Jacob's name was changed to Israel because Israel means he is striven with God. He is striven with God. tells me there's hope that God can change your circumstances. He can change who you are. For people that are wrestling with stuff in their life, there is hope for, from an addictions and all kinds of stuff that we can get involved with. There is a new day that can cometh called the help of the Lord. God is for you. 
God wants you to have life. God wants to give to you a blessing that will last into all eternity. And so the sovereign God that we, that we worship, who satisfies their years with good things, who renews our, our strength like an eagle. That imagery right there, the renewing of your strength. Uh, I'm not an expert on this eagle thing, but this I understand that the eagle that at some point in its life will pluck feathers, and so they will grow back afresh and anew. Have you ever heard that? Oh, boy. I'll have to look it up and make sure that I'm thinking right. But I believe that's the connotation. That there is a moment in our life or sometime where we are stripped from everything that we had our trust in, everything that we somehow thought we had control of and thought we were going to, and thought it was going to be, by now we're going, it's going to be this way. And somehow we thought that when retirement came and whenever that phase would it, would it be like this? And sometimes it's, oh, now what do I do? I'm thinking out loud. Here's what it comes. I'm sensing it comes back to this. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Can I bless God as I did then? Can I bless him now? If I have less than I have had when I started out, or if I have more than I've had, when I started out, I will bless the Lord. As Paul described, I've learned the secret of being content. I've learned not to be anxious. I've learned this. In other words, that we're becoming seasoned. I love that word. Seasoned. Seasoned saints we have. Right? Seasoned. What is it you got to have to be seasoned? Well, it takes time. Some things just take time. Sometimes healing takes time. Sometimes healing will not come until we find the rest Receive the rest. Right? The healings. There are many. There's several that God heals. He can get, He can heal instantaneously, moment. Just raise someone up from the dead. And other times He chooses to associate other people, the body of Christ, the nurture to assist, to bring encouragement. Sometimes he uses doctors. Oftentimes he's for thankful. Wow, you break a bone, they can help you fix, get that in place. God is good. God has blessed us. Look what we have. Look what God has done. And so, do we have reason to bless the Lord? Yes, bless the Lord. All you his hosts, you who serve him doing his will. Bless the Lord, all you who, who work, his works of his. Bless the Lord, all you works of his in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. When my flesh doesn't want to thank God, that's when I need to praise the Lord anyway. Come on. What do you mean? There are days where you have to push through. There will be days when you don't feel like praising God. God doesn't send you out. God doesn't send you away. He just gives you the time you need. He just gives you gives the space you need. When I want to have a little pity party, probably just smiles a 
We'll wait, give you the time. You'll be back. You'll come to me. Is that God good? Sometimes we, fi- we, we, we wrestle with feelings we've never felt before. We're going through a season. We're on a different stage of life. Let's keep pressing on. But God has given us a foundation. You're not done yet. He's still building your life. As long as you stay on the foundation, he's going to fit the next block and he's going to fit the next brick. He's going to fit the next portion of the building. He's going to crown you with the crown of righteousness. The day is coming when you're going to be crowned with the crown of righteousness. I can't fathom it. He's the one who's crowned. Worthy, worthy, worthy. It's the Lamb of God. Disciples were together with Jesus in the upper room. And Jesus said, I will wait. I will not eat this with you. He's waiting. Patient. We're going to have uh, uh, the communion. um, we, We slip into this thought. Jesus said, Do this in remembrance of me. Cal, would you come, Joe, could you come and help pass out the elements? We invite you to take these moments and just begin to think, Jesus died for me. Jesus died, shed his blood. Go ahead and begin to distribute them as, as you will. There's a time to reflect on the victory side of things. And he has conquered the grave. He has conquered sin. He has conquered death. He is a conqueror, more than a conqueror in your life. And I want us to latch hold. I want us to cling to him today. I want us to remember